Antebellum is the cinematic equivalent of a kid in class who thinks they have the answer to a really hard question. So they feel all smart and everything uh, until they realize that every single kid in the class also has the same answer. Um, let me explain. So I've seen a lot of descriptions of Antebellum and uh, they all get a little spoilery. So I'll just tell you what I thought the movie was going to be about based on the trailer. So from the trailer, Antebellum stars Janelle Monet as seemingly two different people. One who is a very successful person, the other who is a slave. And then... I don't know. So this was supposed to come out earlier this year and like almost everything else got pushed back because of pandemic. And um, I got to say, I was pretty intrigued by this movie. I saw the trailer. I was like, I don't really know what, what's happening here. And those type of trailers usually always get me where I'm like, I have no idea what's going on. I have no idea what the movie's about. And I like Janelle Monet, So uh, I was interested and I was excited for the movie. And I watched it. And um, like almost everything else in my life this year, uh, I was let down. It, it is it is such a frustrating movie. Not like, not like a tenant or I'm thinking of any things where it's frustrating because like you're kind of confused on what's happening, whatever. Frustrating because it's bad. Um, but like I also saw like potential here. So let me go back to the metaphor that I said earlier. Um, that's kind of how I feel the directors were with this movie. It probably surprises no one that um, a movie like this where it's seemingly about slavery, uh, the filmmakers are trying to say a lot, right? They're trying to say a lot about the messages and its themes. And I appreciate the intention but there is no execution. And I say that because the movie basically just tells you wh what it's going for and what it means. And that is something I do not like. I appreciate some subtlety in movies. I don't need something overtly clever where it's like a puzzle pieces, even though I like those movies. Once again, I'm thinking of ending things. But I appreciate some subtlety in it. This movie is like, like an hour and a half of them punching you in the face about what it is they're trying to say. And I'm not complaining about that because of what they're trying to tell us, I guess. Um, it's not about what they're trying to say, it's how they're trying to say it, where they are repeatedly abusing you. And why that's frustrating is because there are ways to show and get the message across for your societal themes without being just completely obvious with it. It, it, it really does feel like a, a boneless Jordan Peele movie. I mean, Get Out is just one example, a perfect example of making your societal themes prevalent in the movie without just straight up telling us and also just straight up making a good fucking movie. And not only that, not only is it an hour and a half of it kind of building up there and, you know, completely hitting you on the nose with it. But then after that hour and a half, it feels like this movie was all just leading up to its last about 15 minutes or 20 minutes or so. And then by that time, you didn't even give a shit about the reveal. One, because it's just, I don't know, I didn't, I didn't like how the movie was progressing. And two, with how they choose to show how it progresses. Wow, my grammar is all over the fucking place right now. The reveal, which is what they were building up to, was totally predictable. Who... Like, I, you just know it almost from looking at the trailer or like 10 minutes in. I'm just like, well, where could this possibly go? It's probably going to go here. And that's exactly what happened. This movie is like Get Out plus a specific Black Mirror episode that I won't say because it's kind of spoilery. But you'll probably know which one if you watch it. So it's like Get Out plus Black Mirror plus a dash of not very good and then that's what you get with this movie now let me say is this movie terrible like is this movie some dog shit to me personally no all right i i save you know the dog shit for for those special type of movies and it's it's especially frustrating like i said earlier is because there are some good things about this movie and i'm interested to see what the directors do next um because of what i saw here but I don't know. Also, it kind of rubs me the wrong way. <laughs> like, I can't help but laugh at this movie because I feel like the directors are like, man, we got something good. They're never going to see it coming. And then really, it's totally obvious to the audience. And it's like, what the fuck? So let me say, you know, Janelle Monet is very good in the movie. I thought the entire cast, to be honest, was pretty good. Uh, the cinematography is great in the movie. I mean, you can even see when it starts the opening shot. It's this long shot, long take 
kind of taking you through the plantations and everything, showing you what's happening, and then eventually gets on Janelle Monae's face. I mean, the, visually, this this movie looks pretty good. And not only not only visually does it look good, I mean, I would say it's visually damn near in, engaging, I guess. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm bashing this a little too hard. Because um, in reality, this isn't the worst movie I've seen. It's not even close. Um, but... I don't know. The it's it's kind of hard to take this movie seriously, especially when it's trying so hard to be taken seriously. Uh, just uh, disappointed again, but that's okay, cause that is 2020 for all of us. And apparently, a lot of other people were disappointed too, uh, which I was kind of surprised by. Uh, I did not expect this movie to get a low score as it has gotten, at least from what I've seen. Um, I kind of expected it to be a little bit more divided, but. Uh, guess not so like i said there are some positives here not too many but there are some positives um some aspects of the movie are done pretty well but i mean overall the movie just kind of falls flat and is just disappointing it's sad sad times but i would be interested to see what they're going to do next uh the directors in terms of what movies they're going to do next maybe something less on the nose next time but guys on a different note I have so much fucking content ahead. I got. I was lucky enough to get some tickets for the New York Film Festival, um, just because you know, obviously, a lot of stuff is going virtual now, so I can actually get some tickets without having to fly to New York. Um, so I'm seeing a lot of movies there, decent amount, specifically on the rocks, Nomadland, French Exit, Hello. So those I'll have reviews for um, up eventually. And then I might see, I might be able to see The Trial of Chicago 7 uh, later this week. That one I'm still unsure about. Um, even if I do end up watching it later this week, I probably won't post a review until it gets a little bit closer to the Netflix release date, maybe. Um, but regardless, that's why you should follow me on Letterboxd, because then you can stay up to date with what I'm watching. Um, but yeah, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm done rambling. Um, Antebellum is not good. Oh well. Shit happens. Thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe. And what is it? Yeah, I guess just take care. Stay safe. Still a pandemic. All right. Bye. <laughs>